This is Ian Golden with DJ Tech Tools. Back in the day when we were using records, it was pretty easy. We bought a couple records, we brought them home, propped them against the wall, and you worked them into your existing collection. Today I'm going to show you how to work digital files you purchased from the internet into your digital music collection. All right, so I'm going to show you three programs in this demo. Tractor, iTunes, and Mix and Key. And those are the three programs I use to bring songs into my digital music collection. Over here I've got a track that I just purchased. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do with my new track is drag it into iTunes. And you're going to see that that's copying. It just copied it into the iTunes music library. And if I go scroll up, there it is. If I do Apple R, it's going to reveal that that song has now been copied into the iTunes music library. The song is still on the desktop, however, so now I will delete that. And the file that is in iTunes is now referencing that file that's copied into the iTunes music library. So to make sure that actually happens for you, you want to go into preferences, click on advanced, and make sure that this is checked copy files to iTunes music folder when adding to library. It's really important. That'll help make sure that the music you have stays organized and that it never goes missing. So now that we've got it in, in iTunes, I go ahead and do Apple I and modify the info. So here's where I'm going to put in some of the notes like bang in electro, or if I have a uh, secret word that I like to describe this track, I'll use that like uh, jitter or bug or anything that you want to use. Then I'll go ahead and assign it to the right um, genre. For me, I use House Electro for that track. You also notice that in my list here, I've got um, things numbered. Why? Because I want breaks to be near house and I want those to be at the top of my list, but alphabetically they're not related. So I put a number one in front of everything that I want to group. And here I have everything related to hip hop, which would include R&B, rare groove, so on and so forth. And I've also, of course, got them ordered by importance. So as I'm scrolling through that list um, in the club, I don't have to go searching for things. And once I properly labeled that, I'm going to go ahead, open up Mixed in Key. This is optional. It's a great program. I personally use it. I know a lot of people that also use it. Uh, it does cost money, but I think it's probably worth uh, the cash you'll pay. So I just drag and drop that straight into mixed in key. I'm gonna click analyze and it's now analyzing the song for um, the key. And once that's done, it's going to update the tag in the MP3 so that that information is permanently with the MP3 file. So it's done, it's in the key of 5A, which is a uh, special code um, that they used that will relate. Now, if I click on that track, you'll notice that the tag updated and now I've got 5A in front of my artist name. It's a personal preference of mine. You can define that in mixed in key under preferences, under key, write song key into MP3 tag, and you can tell it where you want to put it. I personally like it in front of the artist name because then I can sort by artist name and group keys. So we've got the information pertinent to the song in the file. We've got the key in the file. The next thing I normally do is create a playlist, um, usually for the club that I'm going to play that night. So I'll make this call tonight's music. And then with that playlist created, I'm going to switch over to Tractor. Now, right now, this song is not in Tractor and it's not in Tractor's collection. We want to bring it in. So we're going to click on the iTunes playlist. And then we're going to scroll down and look for that new playlist, Tonight's Music. Now I'm going to right click or control click if you have to, and I'm going to import to collection. What that's going to do is import any songs that are not in Tractor's collection um, into the collection so you can play them inside of Tractor. Then I'm also going to import to playlist. So this is going to bring the playlist from iTunes, which we're actually looking at here. We're directly looking at all of the playlists that are in iTunes and it's going to move them into Tractor's permanent playlist and you'll see that it's now there under tonight's music and then I'm going to drag that into a, uh, a crate section where I can quickly access it without going into this tree and there I have it. So this track is now in Tractor's collection. You can think of the Tractor collection as your specific DJ collection that you really want to play out. And you can think of iTunes as your greater music collection. So you don't need to have uh, all the records in your music collection in your Tractor collection, because chances are high that you probably don't want to play all that music, and you certainly don't want to process it. So 
Think of it in terms of records. You've got a big wall of records that is your music collection, and then you probably, on the other side of the room, have a small row of records that are the ones you regularly play. That small row, row of records is your Tractor music collection, and the big wall of records is your iTunes music collection. So I don't bring everything in from iTunes. I only bring tracks as I need them, and if I know I want to play them in my sets. So right now, this file is now in the Tractor music collection, and it will always be available to us there. If we scroll over to the right, you'll see that this file has been analyzed, because it was automatically analyzed when it was imported. You can adjust that setting here in the settings file under file management and tell Tractor if you want to have it analyze the tracks either here when you import it into the collection or here when you load a track into the deck. Keep in mind that Analyst takes up CPU power so the most efficient thing is to leave both of these unchecked, right click on a track, and then select analyze manually so that you never have Tractor using unnecessary CPU. If you want to just have it automated you might want to leave this or this checked. When it's analyzed, it creates an overview of the song, drops a beat marker at the beginning where it thinks the first beat is, and also guesses what the BPM is. Usually on most songs, Tractor is pretty accurate. We're going to have to check it though to make sure. The way to check that is to go through and compare these peak points of the waveforms with these white grids. And if they're not accurate, you can change the BPM and move the grid into place. Tractor did a pretty good job with this track. So, we've got the song in Tractor, it's been analyzed, now we need to prepare it for our set. The first thing I do is look for the first big part of the song. So I'm looking for that first part of the track where I know I want to be done with my mix. This is my own personal uh, method, you can alter it as needed or come up with your own. And what I'll do here is go ahead and store a cue point and make that my grid marker. That grid marker is white, so it's always pretty present, and I always know, okay, the white marker is the beginning of the song. Then I'm gonna go back to the first cue point, the tractor set, and I'm gonna change that to a load marker. So now each time this file is loaded into any deck, it's gonna automatically load to that point there. And visually I know, okay, that's my mix out point. So that's my personal method for bringing tracks from the digital music stores to the dance floor. I realize this video is a little bit long, but once you get used to the process, you'll be able to do this really quickly. And most importantly, your music's going to be super prepared and ready for any situation. I genuinely believe that in digital DJing, preparation is one of the most important things. Keeping your music files organized and well prepared for a stressful environment like the club is probably one of the most important things you'll do in your career as a digital DJ.